Charlie? Well, the average American family does it by going to less expensive places and getting massive subsidies from the expensive places. If, if we had to give our college education to only people who could write cash checks for sixty or $70,000 a year, we wouldn't have that many college no. students. So most people are paying less or getting subsidies. And, and, uh, but I think it is a big problem that education has just kept raising the price, raising the price, raising the price. And they say, but college educated people do better. <laughs> it's a big bargain. But maybe they do better because they were better to start with yeah. before they ever went to college. Yeah. And they never tell you that. It, and, it's a ridiculous argument. And, yeah. and, and, and so. I think that's one of the silliest statistics that they publish. I mean, to, to say that a college education is worth X because people that go to college earn this much more than the ones that don't. You're talking about two different universes, and to attribute the entire difference to the one variable that they went to college as opposed to the difference between the people who want to go to college and have the ability to get into college. It, it, it's completely nutty, it's a fraud. and about 70% of the people believe in it. So it <laughs> gives you a certain hesitation about relying on your fellow man. So I think most people just have to struggle through with the system the way it is. There's a big tendency to have prices rise to what can be collected. And people just rationalize that the service is worth it. And I think a lot of that has happened in education. And, and of course, a lot is taught in higher education that isn't very useful to the people who are, who are learning it. And of course, all those people would never learn much from anything. So it's really wasting your time. And, and that's just the way it works. So I think there's a lot wrong. What I noticed that was very interesting is that when the Great Recession came, every successful university in America was horribly overstaffed, and they all behaved just like 3G. They all, with a shortage of money, laid off a lot of people. And the net result is they all worked better when it was all over with the people gone. And so this right-sizing is, is not all bad. I don't think there's a college in America that wants to go back to its old habits. And, uh, but you put your finger on, it is a real problem to look at those sticker shocks. And it's like any other problem in life. You, you have just to figure out your best option and just live with it. We can't change Villanova or Fordham. They're gonna do what they're gonna do. And, and as long as it works, they'll keep raising the prices. And it'll keep working. Yes. Um, and that's pretty much the way the, the system works. When it really gets awful, there's finally a rebellion. In my place in Los Angeles, the little traffic accident got so, cost too much to everybody because of so much fraud in the chiropractors and some of the plaintiff's attorneys and so on. And finally, the little accidents were costing so much that, that they worried about the guy who lived in a tough neighborhood would, couldn't afford to drive out of it to get a job. And, and the auto insurance companies thought, my God, the uh, price is going up like this. They'll have legislation creating state auto insurance or something. So the net result is they put the plaintiff's attorneys to trial in every case. And that fixed it. And maybe something like that will happen in higher education. But without some big incentive, I think higher education will just keep raising the price. On that cheerful note, what?